thank you for the kind introduction um, so that everyone knows who I am now. We can get right into dependency hell. So to the, today's talk is about dependencies and their relationships. Dependency is a state in which one object uses the function of another object. And in the JavaScript world, we have a pretty good tool and pretty great infrastructure to make that functionality available and consumable. And so dependency relations bring us a lot of good, but sometimes we are really mad about them, hence the term dependency hell. But let me actually start this talk today with a little story. About two years ago, um, when I started my university course, I was looking for people who had already done some projects, already did some cool stuff, and so I was looking around, and there was a person who had already done a Node project. So obviously we became friends, um, but I soon found out that Node wasn't their only technology, like it was my only technology I'd done projects with. He had done C, C++ hardware, he had an extensive knowledge of networks and much better computer scientists than I was back at the time, and then I am now. But when we, when we started hacking together, it always felt like I was more productive somehow. And we showed each other some code and, and started hacking. And so I read through his modules and code, and then I found one line where there was a lot of asynchronous code that was handled, and it, it was requiring this, this weird module for an NPM. And so I said, why are you using this weird module and not async? which handles asynchronous code, and at that time was the most dependent upon package and the most downloaded package. And he said, what's async? I have no idea what that is. I wrote this module myself, um, and so it handles asynchronous code. And said, OK, now I know why, why it feels like I'm more productive than you. And so this is the only thing to this day that I could probably ever uh, teach to him that's use npm search, um, or better yet, nodemodules.com, or npm search, or their web version of the search. And that made them a productive developer, not only excellent, but productive. And once he realized that he can just do npm search, and then there's a package, and then you just plug them together, the productivity just exploded. It got to the point where I had to be very, very careful what I was saying, because the next morning he had just done it. And so um, we were living in this, in this uh, university home back at the time, and there was this very, very shitty internet where you had to put in auth credentials every few hours. And so I said, ah, oh, this is so annoying. We should have a bot that just fills in the credentials. And the next morning he was like, yeah, I automated the router UI, so it resets the MAC uh, address, which forces the form to come up, and then I automated the form, and so we have um, this little Raspberry, and you just put it here, plug it in, and then the internet is awesome, and it was just great, and that's just because he installed all the things, um, plus the knowledge he already had. So that's pretty cool. But now comes the part that is even more important for me and for us as a community if we want to be welcoming and enable more people to do stuff. So this was just the beginning of my university course, and obviously, I met a beginner programmer. And there was this other person that had already done some websites, already sold some websites, but it's pretty, pretty much been copy-pasted stuff, um, pretty horrible. Um, but that's how we all start out. I mean, it's horrible in a technical sense, but it's pretty cool that you actually did some things. And then the university courses came in, like teaching the basics of programming and then advancing and like doing it the real way. And he was really frustrated because all he wanted to do is build websites, do things, and that didn't help at all. So here's the thing I told him, use NPM search. Um, and obviously it wasn't that easy because he didn't even know what NPM is. But once I got this all explained, I said to him, listen, for everything you want to do, there's someone out there who has already done it. And you only need to rearrange things in new ways and be creative. So NPM Search made him a productive developer. And some people, especially university, think you can only teach things 
by making people deeply understand the basics and the core principles of stuff, but I think you can just stop boring people and give them tools so they can start creating, and then they will keep creating, and sooner or later they want to understand, and then it goes on and on, and it never stops. And so this person built a mean app, um, their first Node, Node thing, um, an Angular app, it was talking to Twitter and Facebook via OAuth just three months later. And obviously, he didn't understand anything about OAuth, but no one does. And so he just, he just installed all the packages. I gave him a little guidance. And just three months later, he was a productive developer. This is what is enabled by NPM. They have a really great CLI tool and they have a registry that's available for everyone. They're hosting it for us, they're making it accessible, and they have an incredible team of humans working on that. And I couldn't be more happy about this because it's enabling everything. So that's pretty cool, but the infrastructure isn't everything. We have this cool little thing, our community. And so this is what our community achieved. So who here ever published a module? Can you raise your hands? That's quite a few people. That's pretty cool. There are no exact numbers, but there are about 50,000 or more than 50,000 individual people who published modules. And it's, it's just incredible to observe this, to see people coding in the open, talking about stuff. And it's just inspiring, and it, it makes everyone so productive. What we have is 180,000 modules. Everywhere where you can run JavaScript, be it on the server, in the browser, on your terminal, in your TV, in your knitting machine, we can use these modules. So everything is pretty awesome, right? The thing is, we don't just need productive developers with an enormous output. In the long term, if we want to ship serious products, that also pay the bill for all this. Um, we need to be able to work in teams. And of course, we need flexibility and productivity, but we also need stability and maintainability. And this is the part where most of the more serious developers come in and say, small modules are nice in theory, but it doesn't work. Stuff keeps breaking all the time. And there's just so much overhead. And so, we came up with a term that is so privileged, it could probably only come into existence in the tech community because we call it dependency hell. The worst possible place we could be in because code that other people wrote for us stops working. Imagine you're a small kid and instead of asking your parents, for this one certain piece of Lego, you just have every single Lego piece available to you. Doesn't matter what color, what size, how many of them, what form, you can just build anything you want. This is how I see the NPM registry. And I'll keep imagining one of these Lego blocks breaks and your house collapses or whatever you've built and does no longer work the way you wanted it to be. What would you do as a small kid? You would probably start crying because your beautiful house just collapsed. And that's what we do. Small modules suck, NPM sucks, semantic versioning sucks, NPM sucks, everything sucks. Um, I think we need to grow up. Because this room would be pretty empty without all the modules. And I'm serious, this room would be pretty empty without all the modules. This is a huge part of the success of, of JavaScript that we can make functionality available for others without any friction. So, we have to realize this. We might be getting functionality for free, but we have to write tests for it ourselves. And there's one exception. We only use modules by John Dewey Dalton, which is a joke because there's absolutely no exception. It's quite the opposite. Even if we only use modules by John David Dalton that are so, so well tested, we still have to write our own tests because that's the only way we can prove 
that our code is working. Actually, the test suite is what defines what our, our software is. And if we don't have that, we just have something. And even though if you're relying on well-tested modules for all the implementation bit, it's not software, it's only a hack. And I don't want to exclude myself here. I'm using hacks all the time. But the thing is, we need to be aware of it, and we need to stop laying the blame on others. There's one thing about dependency hell that's accurate. Hell is a place where you get punished for self-inflected sins. It's not the others, it's you. You have to write tests for your stuff. So we have to embrace that modules are everything. They make us productive. They are the reason why we're here. They are the reason why JavaScript is so successful, because we can share and be open about the stuff we're working on. And we have to accept that we have to test our stuff. That's the deal. Others may write the implementation bits, but we have to write the tests, because that's the definition of what we are writing. So that's the key to maintainable software. And so over the course of the last year, I started writing a tool, or rather testing, because that's what I did all the time so it's stable. And it helps package authors to aut their, automate their entire publishing process. So there's a cool quote from Eckhead.io. Is the sound still working? Yeah, OK. Trust us, this will change your workflow but for the better. And I agree, it's a great tool. But the thing is, it's only for package authors. and. You saw earlier, some people raised their hands when I asked if, if there are some package authors here. But I realized if I want to make a change in, in the entire ecosystem, and if I want to enable more people to contribute their code and to share their stuff, I have to build something for the users of the packages. And every author is a user of a package as well. And so I listened to my friend Stefan Seid. So I, I try to stick to these three U rules. Humans should human. Computers should computer. And computers only exist so we can better human. So instead of talking about this library that's only just for package authors, I want to show you something entirely new I was working on with a bunch of friends. And no one saw it before. Um, and I'm going to do a live demo. So let's see what happens. So the thing that makes dependency hell so annoying is that you have to keep track of the changes in, in your dependencies and the new versions. And then you can either pin them down and keep, up, keep updating them all the time, or you can just use ranges, and then you're, you're vulnerable to just random fails in your stuff. And so you, you're constantly managing your, uh, your, your dependencies. So the idea is that. Um, so I have this demo repository. It, it doesn't have any code, but it has some dependencies to show this to you. And so I built this tool. It's called Greenkeeper. And I enable this repository. Obviously, this had to happen because I have to sync first. Demos, I'm sorry. I have a lot of packages, so that excuses it, maybe. Awesome. So this repository is enabled now, and this means there's a computer computering in the background 
to manage all the dependencies for us. Of course. Okay, this had to happen, obviously. Um, I'm very sorry. I swear it worked when I was sitting in front of the stage. Um, I'll just explain the concept, um, and then you can see if you like it. So I have these dependencies, and they are all using versions where um, I say, use this version and everything that's a new patch or a minor version. And so when I enable this repository, I automatically get a pull request that pins down all my dependencies to the highest version that's currently satisfying my range. And then I merge this pull request in, and then I have pinned down dependencies. What's happened then is whenever a dependency changes, you get another pull request in real time that changes nothing but the version. And then the pull request comes in, and then you probably have some CI service configured. It automatically runs the tests. It tests just this dependency change in isolation, and if your tests are still passing, you can just merge it right away with, one, with the click of one button. And if it doesn't, you know exactly which version cause the problem. And you have a branch ready sitting there, so you just check it out. You can working on it, and then you can just merge it in as well. And so the idea is that we're going to make this available for every public repository on GitHub so that everyone can have pinned down dependencies. Everyone can have control over what version they're using, but at the same time, it's always up to date. So this isn't quite as impressive without the demo, but it's available today. And you can get this via NPM, obviously. Um, it's npm install minus g greenkeeper. And please try it. Please sign up. Please share it. Um, as I said, we want to make this available for all public repositories so that at some point this is running on every single NPM dependency and therefore the entire NPM ecosystem just doesn't make us productive. It's also maintainable. Thank you. And maybe you should wait 10 more minutes, and then we have this thing fixed, and then it works. I promise it's working. Thank you.